Hi guys, my name is Sandy. I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. Uh, they are in sixth grade and eighth grade this year. And I wanted to give you guys kind of like a mid-year update on the curriculum picks that we made last year for this school year. And I wanted to let you guys know what worked and what didn't work for us. So here we go. Here's everything laid out that we've used just this year so far. This is for my sixth grader and my eighth grader. This is what my eighth grader's weekly schedule looks like. It's in a clipboard. And I do two weeks at a time. And when he's finished with the subject, he crosses it off. This is what it looks like when it's done. And then all of his worksheets for the week, I just put behind it. And at the very back of it, he has like an algebra one formula sheet. This is his little cheat sheet here that he wrote himself. And then he's got a formula sheet in case he needs to look at that for anything in algebra. We usually do like four day weeks and we go from the beginning of August to the end of June and we just take July off for summer break. Right now we're doing four and a half days. We've taken way too many vacations lately. We went to Chicago for Christmas and we went to Dallas for New Year's and we're getting ready to go on a cruise soon. So I've added a half a day onto Fridays. We just do language arts and math on Fridays. And every day he does language arts, he does math, science, history, and then electives. He does Spanish every day. His electives right now, he's got health, a money elective, he does music, and then we just switch off. He goes back to money, and then the next week he's got health, money, music, and money. For language arts this year, my son is doing the Good and the Beautiful level 7, and he's been using the Good and the Beautiful since level 4. He likes it, um, he knows how to use it every day because he's used it for so many years. The only thing we do is we flip out the books because he really doesn't like any of the literature that goes along with this. And we've added in Brave Writer book studies to go with some of the books that he's done. Here are all of the chapter books my eighth grader has read this year so far. He doesn't really enjoy reading. He loves it when I read to him just like my younger son does. But he doesn't like so much silent reading, so anything he reads on his own is good. And some of these might be a little bit under his reading level, but I'm fine with him reading them. And a lot of these, we've done the Brave Writer book study to go with it. We've got a series of unfortunate events. How to Eat Fried Worms. The Lemonade War. He's got Theodore Boone, Kid Lawyer. Single Shard. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. This is the newest book. Uh, they're not my favorite books, but he loves to read them, and every time a new book comes out, I buy it for him and let him read it just for the fun of it. He's working through these right now, The People of the Sparks. He's a little bit more than halfway done with it, and he just started this one, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. We started off the year with Algebra 1 with Elementary Algebra by Jacobs. This is sold by Master Books. And it just didn't work well for us. It's a very good program, but it didn't fit my son's learning style and didn't really fit my teaching style. And maybe if we had purchased the videos on the Masterbooks Academy, it would have gone much more smoothly, but I already invested in these and I didn't want to spend any more money. And the other issue that we had with it is there wasn't an actual workbook where he could write his answers in. He had to use a binder for all of his answers and he prefers a workbook. So what we moved to is Easy Peasy Algebra 1. They just started a new offline program and I really like it. It's easy for me to teach. Here are some of the offline worksheets that come with it. And there is room to do some calculations on the worksheet. And he also uses the online component. Here's the online Algebra 1. A lot of times they use the online because there are like videos to watch and there's lectures. And then he'll move on to the workbook after that. And every day there's a quiz. And then there are some tests that are in here as well. For calculators, I started letting him use a scientific calculator so that he's really comfortable for it when he gets to doing the PSAT or the SAT. They are allowed to use that on the test. And he doesn't use it for everything. The smaller calculations he can still do in his head. And there are some PSAT practice questions mixed in here, which I really love about it.
And the Easy Peasy Algebra 1 also comes with some grading sheets because he is earning high school credit for this. And this is the little bubble fill-ins for the PSAT practice. For social studies this year, he is using the BJU World Studies. This is a level 7. I purchased it for 7th grade, but he never used it. This is going really good for him. I can't complain about this at all. It's got a textbook she reads in it. It's got student activity sheets. And this is the answer key. And this is the teacher edition. I don't really use this too often, but it's nice to have. So this history has been going pretty good for him and he can complete it pretty much on his own. I am adding a few things, like I'm adding a few YouTube videos to make it a little bit more interesting and I'm adding this art project right here. This is from Rainbow Resource. It's like $12. This was for Ancient Greece. This was for Ancient Africa. And this was for Ancient China. It's like a little Chinese tea bowl. And he's painted these all himself. It's a kit that comes with everything you need. It has the paint and the paint brushes and even a plate to put the paint on. For science this year for my 8th grader, he's been using the elemental science, earth science and astronomy for the logic stage. And it comes with these four books. And he's done it for several months and he's actually not using it anymore. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this program. I really liked it a lot and he liked it. The issue that we had, which is why we're not using it anymore, is because he was unable to do it independently. Like, he did it for a few months and he still was unable to do it independently. And I don't know if it's because there's just too many books that go with it and too many working parts, but we switched over to something else. We've switched over to the Easy Peasy Earth Science. He can do this completely independent on his own and he doesn't need any help from me except for like a few of the science experiments. And this is the online version. I bought the workbook sheets from them online from Amazon, and I have them in this binder. And the reason why I wanted him to do something independent was because his algebra he needs help with. I have to sit with him. Sometimes that will take half an hour to 45 minutes a day, and I do help him with his Good and the Beautiful Language Arts also. And that adds time onto my day, so I really needed him to do something completely on his own. For electives this year, he is getting a high school credit for Spanish. We started off the year with Mango Language. Mango Language. It was completely free. We live in Massachusetts, and you can get a Boston Public Library card if you live anywhere in Massachusetts. And Mango Language, the Spanish, was completely free for us. He tried it for a few months and he was also watching Spanish movies on Netflix and he told me he just wasn't learning Spanish enough. So we went back to the program he used last year. It's an online program. It's foreign language for kids by kids. Here's the stuffed animals I'd purchased for him. This is Grande and Pequena is the little one. And let me show you that on here. And he's learning Spanish and he's enjoying it. He says some of the videos are kind of like cheesy and childish, but he's learning it and that's the most important thing, especially since he's getting a credit for it. And this is it right here. So what they do is they watch a video and then they do questions having to do with the video. He's also doing a health elective this year. It's just the easy peasy health. He's doing a money course. And he's doing the easy peasy music, he's doing the modern music that they have. And let me show you guys the money course. I was originally going to turn this into like a high school economics course and give him credit for it. But when I was researching it, it looks like a lot of colleges don't accept um, economics courses when completed in 8th grade. So he just completes this book about two days a week. And the thing I like about this is it requires a lot of online research. Here's some of the things that it goes over. It does go over government and taxes, economics. I have a subscription to Smithsonian Magazine and I've been reading this to my kids. 
and we took a field trip to the John F. Kennedy Museum. We haven't done too many field trips just because of COVID and a lot of museums are closed around here. And also for extras, we've done two Harry Potter unit studies this year. I just have the first book here. We actually have done the second and third book this year, but I bought the audio books. I don't have the physical book. And here's some of the books that go with the second and third unit study. I have a cookbook, so we made a few recipes from there. This is, was for astronomy for the second book. And this was for the third book. And here's all the worksheets that they've completed that have gone with it. That's pretty much everything for my eighth grader this year. I have picked his curriculum already for ninth grade. I'm slowly collecting everything. And that video is probably going to be out in the beginning of March for the curriculum picks for the 2022-2023 year. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Bye!